everyone, my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video which are all of my mythology based recommendations. to make a video where I just kind of have all of the books based off of mythology that I've read that I've liked in in one video and I, and I really want to keep reading mythology based books I want that to be a more prominent theme on my channel because that is something that I very much enjoy so I thought I'd kind of have this base video of this is what I've read and liked so far and then as I read more mythology books then I will make more mythology recommendation videos but I thought I just start off with what I have already. So I'm going to divide this up by continent um, in terms of like what mythology I have read because I when I say mythology I don't just mean like Greek or Roman. I, I want to read more diverse mythology. So we are going to start off with Asia and there are a couple Korean mythologies that I would like to recommend. So the first one is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is actually a duology. There's Wicked Fox and Vicious Spirits. I read them both and I very much enjoyed both. This follows, well, I guess it's technically called the Gumiho duology because it follows our main character who is a Gumiho and she's the nine-tailed fox and she loses her fox bead to a human and so she then has to figure out how to get it back and there's so much more to it and it's such sweet romances and then the second book you get a lot more with the side characters and more so what's happening with them as well as what's going on with the main character and so I just loved this little Korean mythology duology. <laughs> then the other Korean mythology I have to recommend is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh, this is a very different uh, book than the Gumiho. So our main character uh, lives in a village where there are, there are these terrible storms that happen and lots of people are taken by these storms and so she and her village have been sacrificing one woman to the sea to be the sea god's bride every year in hopes that one day it will be his one true bride and then that will make him stop sending the storms. However, when our main character's brother's love <laughs> is about to be sacrificed, she really doesn't want her brother and them to be separated, so she jumps in instead. She finds out that the sea god is not actually angry, but he's asleep, and so she must work to figure out how to wake him up and travel through the spirit world so that she can free her people from these storms, and it's a wonderful romance with lots of twists and turns and who is this person and what's going on here and what does that actually mean with the whole plot of how this is all going it was it was so beautiful and there are so many like little elements to the story that were very sweet it's a very adventurous story throughout the spirit world without actually a lot of traveling here and traveling there so you kind of get to meet all these different characters and leaders and whatnot and so it's not too long of a book too like it's just a wonderful book to read on like a summer afternoon or at the beach or something as you're out staring at the sea so I loved this one a lot then moving on I've got a book that is based off of Chinese mythology and that is six crimson cranes by Elizabeth Lim this is the first in a duology and the second book the dragon's promise comes out later this year I think like August 30th or something I don't know um but so the second book will be out somewhat soon and again I very much enjoyed this book I love Elizabeth Lim's writing so this follows our main character who has magic and she is not supposed to have magic and one day her stepmother learns of her magic when she is supposed to go to a betrothal ceremony and she casts a spell to turn all of her six brothers into cranes, the six crimson cranes. And she puts a bowl on the main character's head and there's a whole thing with that and the main character cannot speak. If she does, for every word that she utters, a brother or a crane will die. And so she needs to figure out how she's going to reverse the curse and turn her brothers back to human and just kind of figure out what's going on with her life. And this just captivated me. I was 
invested from beginning to end. I love our character. I love the events that she goes through. So many like surprise twists and turns where like, oh, you're going around one way and then, oh my word. So this is one I would very much highly recommend if you love just like magical stories. Moving on down to South Asia, we have Star Daughter by Shvita Thakrar, and this is more of a Hindi mythology uh, story, and our main character is half human, half star. And when her father falls gravely ill due to something that she may or may not have, uh, she decides to go up to the heavens to ask the stars for their help in healing her father. And they say that they will help her if she is their human representative for an art-based competition that they have going on. The best friend in this book is honestly one of the best side characters I have ever read. I love her so much and there's a little bit of drama in here but just the way that everything is so beautifully described like everything is so artistic and beautiful and lyrical and like you really feel like you are in the heavens just with how everything is described and written and the writing is just beautiful so it was absolutely wonderful it blew my mind away it was i think my third favorite of the year last year but it was really really tight really close it could have been my first it could have been second um so if you haven't read any hindu mythology or hindu mythology I would recommend this like I recommend this to anyone who has any interest in any element that I have talked about for this book and then moving on to more of the Middle East area I have the candle and the flame by Nafisa Azad and I read this a couple years ago and the story element of this that is mythology esque is that there are jinn which is pretty prominent in a lot of Middle Eastern mythology um, but it's been a while since I've read this but I know I very much enjoyed it when I read it and I really need to read more Middle East mythology and especially Jinn. Like I have such a soft spot for any story that has like Jinn or Genie or anything like that in it, but I just haven't read a lot, but I know there there are a lot like desert fantasies I need to get into, but in terms of mythology, this is where you go. It still takes place in a fantasy world and it is a little more fantasy based than mythology based. But I still wanted to include it on this list just in case it caught anybody's eye. Then I also have Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardust, and this is very, very loosely based off of Persian mythology. I didn't even know that it was based off of mythology until I read the author's note at the end, um, where she said uh, she took a couple of different Persian myths and kind of combined them together with her own fantasy elements to create this story and this is a book that I recommended so much in the past. It was a five star read, it's a standalone fantasy, it has bi representation, like there are just so many elements of this book that I love and I think could go well with other people. <laughs> um, but yeah, fun fact, this is actually person mythology based. It's not super strong, but it's there and so I thought it was worth the mention. And I've got two West African mythology books I would like to talk about, one of which I have, one of which I don't. Um, so the one I have is A Song of Rice and Rune by Roseanne A. Brown. This is the first book in a duology and the second book, A Psalm of Storm and Silence, I have also read and I also very much enjoyed. So I would very much recommend this. Basically it's, it's a magical competition. So it's the idea that there are all these different deities to groups of people and every year there's a competition and whoever wins, it will be the year of that deity then. Uh, whether it's like the deity of water or of light or earth, whatever. Um, different things like that. And so we've got our main character whose sister has been kidnapped and so he has to go and win the competition even though his he might not be super accepted and then we are also following the princess of the land and her mother the queen has just died and she was not ready for that at all so she's trying to figure out if there's a way for her to bring her mother back so and there's a very interesting way that she can bring her mother back but you'll just have to read the duology and find out just what that is then the other one that I have that I do not own is The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I have recommended this a lot when the first and second books were just coming out. The series is not finished, but there has been some delay with the trilogy. 
Um, so I'm pretty sure the third book is coming out. We just have no idea when. There were film rights happening at some point with this, but I believe that has just been dropped for the moment. So the series is kind of in pause. Um, so if you don't like waiting a while between books, maybe wait a little bit to pick this up. But this, uh, again, is based off of more of a Nigerian, West African mythology, and it follows, it's the idea that they're in the magical land of Orisha, which is kind of Nigeria, but not. It's kind of hard to explain. It, it's, it's that idea, and it's uh, that uh, if you have a white streak in your hair, that basically means you have magic and you are a magi, um, and those are outlawed in the land. If you have magic, you are not supposed to be alive. <laughs> and so we follow our main character as she goes on an adventure with her, I think her brother and possibly the princess, uh, while being hunted by an assassin from the kingdom to try and bring magic back into the world and then try and get equal rights for those with magic and it's it was a really fun read I very much enjoyed the first book the second book was all right so hopefully when the third book comes out it'll be so worth it and it'll be a really good book and then I've got two uh, <laughs> kind of Latin mythology books that I've read both were produced are uh, pro produced these are books uh, both were published through the Rick Riordan uh, imprint um, because he focuses on mythology uh, like mostly middle grade mythology even though they did just do their first YA mythology book but there are two that I have read that I really enjoyed and recommend and there are many more that I want to read from that imprint that I know I would enjoy and probably will recommend um, but the first one is Storm Runner and uh, the what third book no the second book just came out something like that it, it is wonderful. I believe that one is Mayan mythology and our, it's the same idea of like a demigod kid has to fight this evil god and there is disability rep. Um, he has to walk with a cane and so he's not really the fastest walker or runner um, and it was just such a wonderful story. And then the other one is Bala Santiago and the River of Tears. The third book in this series is just about to come out, and this is Mexican mythology. So the River of Tears, we follow kind of the legend of La Llorona. So our main character's friend uh, disappears down by the river, and she believes that La Llorona has taken her friend. And so she needs to go and get her back. So there are those. I want to own them but I need to finish reading those series too. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about that has mythology in it is Irish slash Celtic mythology and that is Curse of the Spectre Queen. This is by Jenny Elder no Moke and so I just finished reading this. You can hear my tortoise in the background. I'm sorry. He, he likes to slide. This is Irish mythology. Basically it's like a 1920s Indiana Jones uh, but gender swapped so our main character is female and she is a code breaker and she works with books a lot and she ends up tagging along on this trip to Ireland to find this old bowl that may or may not contain the Morrigan and that may or bowl may or may not release the Morrigan which may or may not be a good thing. So it's like an Irish Celtic mythology. Her second book which is like Rise of the Snake Goddess or something that is Egyptian mythology and that will be coming out at some point soon and I look forward to reading that one. But I just haven't seen a lot of Irish Celtic mythology books so I got really excited when I found this one. Those are all the books that I will be talking about in this video, kind of all the mythology that I've read and have really enjoyed. Let me know if you have any recommendations. I would love to know if you've read any mythology or if you have a favorite mythology. Do you really love reading Egyptian mythology or Korean mythology or um, like a Mexican mythology or what? Like, I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, you can go ahead and follow me on my bookish social media down below and we can chat there. And while you're down there, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to subscribe as I make videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.